Okay. Um, Khalid, um, I'm here to talk about uh, sharing page tables across uh, unrelated but cooperating processes. So this is uh, something that has been talked about off and on for the last couple of years. So uh, I'll go over it. What is the idea uh, I'm looking at and um, uh, what has been done so far? And then come to an alignment on how do we want to move forward with this. So first of all, what uh, uh, is the problem we are trying to solve here? Uh, so today, uh, when you have threads of the same process, they all share a page table, no problem. You can create as many threads, they all see each other's memory. Uh, each page table entry by itself is fairly small. Uh, but when you have got a, a, a lots of these entries, they start to add up. So for instance, when uh, uh, for our customers who uh, have got a large number of processes that tend to share the same uh, uh, memory regions, uh, they all keep copies of their page table entries. Uh, we could have um, thousands of processes that are all mapping the same pages but keeping their own copy of page table entry and that uh, starts to add up. So um, on x86-64, a 4K page needs eight bytes for a page table entry. Multiplied by uh, 1,000, you already have uh, uh, two pages worth of page table entry. So, this has resulted in real problems for us. So we had a situation where um, uh, there was a system, it had a 300 gigabyte SGA and they had 1500 plus clients running on it. They all uh, were mapping the same SGA. And uh, the system had a um, 512 gigabyte of memory, yet it ran out of memory. And when we investigated what happened, uh, it really was a large amount of that memory was going towards maintaining these page table entries. So that's a problem. Customers consider RAM to be fairly expensive. They want to make maximum use of it. And if a whole chunk of it just disappears underneath them because of a page table, they are not very happy about it. So can we take that same concept of page, uh, uh, threads of the same process, sharing page table, and extend it out to the uh, processes that are not related, but they agree to cooperate with each other? So the solution uh, uh, we uh, are talking about is M-Shared. Uh, this was floated by uh, Matthew originally, and I have been refining and uh, implementing this. Uh, now, uh, we are talking about uh, sharing page tables across processes. So uh, security uh, um, and uh, I protection across processes is important. So we want to make sure that this is an opt-in process. It just doesn't happen automatically. You don't even know it happened underneath you. So every process that wants to share its page table, uh, they need to be aware they are doing that and opt into the mechanism. Um, so uh, what uh, we want to achieve is, uh, first of all, provide a mechanism for a process to tell the kernel that uh, it's creating a memory region and it wants to be able to uh, share the page tables for that region with other processes that share the same memory region and map it into their address space. Um, so once we have established that there is this a, a shared memory region, it's available for MMAP by other processes, then other processes need to know how to find it, how to uh, know its attributes, where it starts, where it ends, and then be able to map it and know they are sharing page tables at that point. Uh, then of course, these are uh, cooperating processes. They need to be able to trust each other because they are looking at each other's memory and making modifications that are visible to everyone else. Um, now, one of the uh, side effects that falls out of it is if you are sharing uh, page table entries across all these processes, your production bits are shared as well. So that's something to keep in mind uh, uh, when app developers are writing apps for this. So where we are so far, uh, I had sent out the first RFC back in uh, January of uh, 2022. Um, there, uh, there was a, a feedback on that and it went through a couple of uh, revisions. And then uh, I had talked about it at uh, LSFMM uh, uh, two years ago as well. We made further refinements and the, the code changed enough to a point where I decided to call, uh, give it a new name because it was fairly distinct with, uh, from what we had started with in terms of uh, what it looked like. So I decided to call it PT share to just remove confusion. But we now have uh, two potential implementations. And what I want to do today is sort out uh, what the API should look like 
and move forward with one. The one I would like to move forward with is the M-share, original M-share uh, proposal with the M-share FS that was added on after some refinement. Um, the second one, PT-share, ended up being an MMAP-based API. It was fairly restrictive. You could only uh, MMAP file, and that's not going to work for our customers, uh, whereas M-share is much more uh, flexible. OK, so um, before I move forward, any questions on what our requirements are and where we are at this point? Masha. Yeah, my, my question is, uh, since uh, page tables are shared, uh, the virtual address has to be shared as well, right? And uh, uh, with the virtual address randomization, uh, how do we ensure that uh, like the processes that want to participate in sharing page tables do not have um, collisions in the VA space? So, uh, yes. Uh, uh I'm um, starting out a, a, in the initial implementation with that very requirement that the virtual addresses across all these processes should be identical. Um, so there is the possibility of a, a collision. So it's up to the process to ensure that it uh, selects a region of memory that tends to be unmapped when it starts up and map it in fairly early on. Because as it starts mapping more and more things, its address space is going to get fragmented. Um, so this is something a database actually does this today already. And it seems to work for them. Not question rather than clarification. So you implicitly expect that uh, not the whole address space is shared, right? So uh, uh, it's absolutely necessary that only portions of the address space are, uh, are shared. Yes, of course, okay. yeah. Uh, I just want to know how it interacts with features based on the page table information like a user vote. And also, I think it also matters when it, you register with user vote missing and uh, in one process and in the other process there is a, a vote. How, how do you design this? Do you plan to disable user vote or just uh, that is by design how it works? Uh. OK, so as I go through uh, uh, some of the implementation detail, I'll start answering those questions as well. Um, but we are going to start out with the enough restrictions to keep those things consistent. So it's um, easier uh, uh, as I uh, uh, show the code a little bit. OK. So uh, first of all, at a high level, how does this, uh, uh, what does this look like to a user that's trying to use this? And then we can go into what happens underneath. Um, so uh, the proposal is to add a, a new in-memory uh, file system, mshareFS. Um, what you do is a user uh, mounts this file system, and this file system is used to establish these shared memory regions. Uh, and this is the file system you can go to to find out what shared memory regions exist, what their attributes are, and then uh, see what you can map into your uh, address space. So the first thing, user would uh, uh, mount this uh, mshareFS file system. And then one process decides to create this shared region that will now be mapped by uh, everyone else who wants to map it. So they simply open a file on that file system, give it a name, and then um, once a file has been created in the uh, file system, we have a new shared memory region in existence. It's uh, an empty container or an empty shell. We don't have anything mapped in there. Um, but it's uh, ready for uh, th uh, objects to be mapped into that address space, which will become visible to everyone uh, that um, maps uh, this shared region. So once we have created this uh, empty uh, container, we need to establish a start point and end point. Currently, I use mmap to do that. You just, uh, uh, the process that creates that file can mmap that FD and uh, establish this start and end point. But I'm open to uh, doing something different. Um, David uh, suggested we use ioctal. That's perfectly all right. Uh, an ioctal on that FD that um, uh, you give the start address, end address, the production bits you want on it, and uh, you have a, a fully defined empty shell ready to use. Okay. 
Uh, so now we have uh, our shared region ready to be used by others, so another process comes along. Uh, first, it needs to find out about this uh, shared region. So it go, uh, goes to that um, file, opens that file, it does a read from the file, and it gets a data structure which gives it uh, that information. What's the start point? What's the size? And now it knows uh, which address it should map it to and how big the region is. It does an, uh, a map of that region, and now that region is visible to it as well. Uh, so when uh, now the process is, uh, they all use this region. When uh, they are done with this region, uh, you know, how do we get rid of this? Unmap it and call unlink. There's a ref count uh, for the shared region. When the ref count hits zero and someone, at least there has been one call to unlink, we'll get rid of the uh, shared region. Okay, so I'll skip this one first. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> Underneath what happens is when uh, we create a new shared region, what we are doing is we, are, we create a new MM struct. This MM struct is not owned by a process, rather it's owned by the FD on MShareFS. And this MM struct will hold all, uh, the VMA and the page uh, uh, tables for this entire shared region. So uh, someone uh, uh, created a file, Establish the start and end point. We populate this MM struct with the VMA and uh, uh, set up the initial uh, production bits. When uh, another process maps the uh, same uh, region into their address space and they try to access it, uh, what will happen is um, the first time they try to access it, there will be a page fault and uh, we capture. Uh, uh, in the page fault handling, we take a look at the VMA where the uh, uh, fault happened, and if the uh, whenever the VMA is shared using this share, uh, uh, memory region, the VMA has a special flag VM shared PT. In the fault handling, we check if the uh, VMA has this flag set. If it has this flag set, then we know we are dealing with a special VMA that's shared across processes. And the VMA in its private data has a pointer to this uh, um, uh, MM struct. This is a special MM struct that holds the actual VMA uh, and uh, has all the uh, right page tables. So upon, um, I think I have a picture for that. Yeah. So upon a page fault, we detect we are dealing with a special VMA. Um, and what we do then is for the, uh, let's assume uh, we are sharing at a, a page D level. Uh, it can be something else, but uh, for example, uh, let's just assume we are working at page D level. Um, the shared region and the MM struct uh, uh, attached to it has the page tables starting at the uh, uh, page D for that entire shared region. What we do is in the fault handling, we point the page D entry for the VMA, the faulting VMA, to this shared page D, and then we uh, return. And at that point, all the uh, accesses start happening using the shared page table. So trying to keep it very simple and not introduce too many complexities, it's easier to maintain that way. So that's the uh, mechanism. Now, sorry, quick question. So if I understood correctly, uh, that shared MM has its own VMA that you created, but in the process that uses this shared uh, VMA, it has another VMA which, po uh, which is uh, VMMM points to the, the other MM, not to the original MM? No, it's VMMM points to its own uh, MM, but uh, there is a flag set on the VMA, VM oh. shared PT, and the uh, private data uh, part of that VM instruct uh, okay. has a pointer to this MM. And that points to the VMA in the other space? Yes. In the other space? Okay, got it. Thanks. I, I, I would just add to that. I, I, I talked previously about it. I think we would want to have something more extreme, which would be like not just a flag, but you would be able to identify, for example, just so like we identify a huge TLBFS, you would be able to identify this is a container. And however you obtain then like the MM behind that via the FD or I don't know that that's just an implementation detail. But you were able, you would be able to identify this is a very special VMA that is a container that might involve multiple projects and most of the MM should just like put their hands off and we're going to talk about that. But page faults would be rerouted to the original MM. Right. 
so I, uh, I think just one thing to mention is that uh, since uh, the VMA that the process has is already not owning the page table right in this case, right? right. So there will be uh, some trick where the page table relies on the VMA information like VMA flags. And user fault is definitely one of the user. I don't know whether there's anything else. Just to mention, we just need to be cautioned. For example, take a use case of the user fault. We just see that uh, the user fault uh, one process uh, register user fault with read protection. The, the, bit ca the page table entry can be read protected. The, on the other side, the VMA actually has no user fault flag attached. So it's kind of, in some of the kernel paths, there will be something weird happening because it will see misalignment uh, of similar things. Uh, and uh, besides that, just to mention, so maybe you, you can have a closer look in the details. I think it is it's workable. So yeah. I, I think the plan would be that most of the MM code would be enlightened that this is a special VMA and you're not supposed to use use of fold FD on that. You're not supposed to goop that. You're not supposed to M protect. I don't know, and we're going to talk about that. I, no, 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 because you, user fault FD, you can you can use user fault FD on, on these sub VMAs. You won't even know. You're not going to see the giant VMA that hosts all of this. You're going to see the sub VM, the specific VMA that you, that you've walked into. You're not even going to know that you're part of an M share region. You're just going to work the way you always work, just like you do for threads today. Just like you do for threads. Just like you do for threads. Just like you do for threads. <laughs> okay, so. Are, are you done with that? Um, because I would like to shift that. Uh, uh, you're uh, saying something that is re really fundamental to uh, at least two parts of the kernel that I care about, and that's uh, memory C groups and, uh, and OM handling. Uh, if you do not really have any owner of that memory, then how do we deal with uh, a lot of memory sitting in, in that region not belonging to anybody, and uh, we are out of memory. So is that something that you have managed to handle? Um, yes, so that uh, there is that little complication, because this memory is not owned by a single process. Rather, it's owned by a, a whole bunch of processes. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> let, let me rephrase that question. So is there a way for me uh, uh, in the OM handler to find all the processes that are having that mapped so that I can kill all of them so they eventually uh, drop their, their file descriptor and hopefully release that memory? Uh, yeah, so th that accounting part, I don't have all of it sol uh, solidified yet. And that's uh, part of the design process. Uh, and uh, uh, that's something we can uh, keep track of because we have this special MM struct and it's actually uh, part of uh, another data structure. What uh, the um, VM uh, uh, private data, it points to another data structure which can uh, has pointed to this MM structure. In that special uh, data structure, I can keep track of all the processes it owns. And then when uh, you do something like proc bit maps, we can then walk that potentially. OK, if, if there is a way to, uh, to A, tell me that uh, there is some memory that uh, that I, I should be considering to uh, find a proper victim and then kill all of them that are sharing. That's essentially very similar to clone VM without uh, clone uh, threat or clone uh, C hand. So uh, we can handle that, but uh, this will need a, a support. So uh, if, if you are haven't implemented that, that, that would be really something that would be required uh, to uh, have it merged. And the second uh, thing is about uh, uh, memory accounting at the MAMCG level, because uh, when we are charging the memory, then we rely on the fact that uh, the primary uh, holder of that memory is MM. Right. But uh, we have cases where we go to that MM from the process without knowing exactly what kind of address that it's mapped to. Uh -huh. OK. Uh, so you want the ability to be able to see what objects are mapped in there? Uh, let's say that somebody do a page fault into that, mm -hmm. uh, into that region. and. Uh, so we do a allocation uh, in a page fold handler, and once that all is done, then I just have a struct folio to charge to a proper C group. Right. And A, do all those processes <laughs> belong to the same C group? Because that's a problem for clone VM w without uh, uh, sharing signals. Mm -hmm. We just have an owner. And that owner sits in a task. 
right? I do not really see how to get yet another MM into, into that concept. So have you thought about that or have you handled that? So, so this is kind of a, like a shared memory, right? right. Uh, so we still uh, like today don't have a very good solution for uh, like for the charging. Like the first one gets the charge. I think the, the similar like I, I'm assuming for the page tables, whoever is the first one will get charged for the page tables as well here, right? That's that's what I started with, but uh, there is a little bit of complication with that. Um, one of the things that database guys told me, oh, this is great. If they don't want the process that created to exist forever, so they say the process can just go away. No, so th if I charge fine. it to that process, so so here uh, the the charge happens to the C group uh, container for the that process. Process goes away, but the C group is still there, right? True. So so here the use case are we assuming that all these processes run in the same container, or they can be in many different containers? So um, if the process that creates the original shared uh, region is running in a container, I think we would want to restrict all the users to be within that same container. Explicitly. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, I think that's what uh, you're going to do that explicitly. Like it cannot be shared by processes from the other C groups. Uh, that can be enforced at the time the objects are mapped into this space. So uh, the, uh, one question that comes up, so how does someone map an object into this space? Um, originally, I was thinking, just use mmap, but that comes with its own uh, uh, possible issues. So what uh, David suggested, use ioctal, because then we can control what gets mapped into it. And that's where we can uh, determine which uh, a C group to charge it to. And if the current address space belongs to a different C, like, the thing is, at the end, uh, process can jump in different C groups, right? Uh, right. So, so in my point of view, we should reroute the page fault to the MM that owns the VMAs and everything around that, and we should charge to that one. We should any page fault, any page will get charged to the MM that is belonging to the to the share memfs however we get that into a c group is a different discussion but as soon as we start allocating a page table from i don't know process 1 and map it into process 2 and it's all it's all getting weird i think right. page table teardown should be done when the original mm goes away so your page table accounting would be correct your c group charging whatever will be correct so Page table page faults would be rerouted to the original MM that owns everything, and there is not really a C group charging issue, right? It's a single process, like you, you fake like the other process was doing the page fault, like uh, remote group. I don't know what we do there. So the the but there was a also comment that the process can go away. The exactly. Original. Yeah, also, the process can go away, the one that owns the shared MemFS. The, the one that is uh, created it originally. Yeah, but we don't care, right? Right. The uh, a shared but, region will continue to exist. Yeah, that, that's but, the important part. The other ones just map it or do whatever they want with it. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, the, the one that creates the, the, the shared MemFS file, maybe that inherits the C group from the other one or something like that, but that MM will stay around and map the pages until it gets torn down. And there is nobody else mapping that stuff anymore in the page tables. Yeah, so. and it has been unlinked. That's when we tear down the page tables, get rid of the MM struct. So, uh, Page tables uh, like pre-allocated for the whole address space as well, or it can on demand? Uh, they are allocated on demand, just once in that shared uh, MM struct. So all these like page table allocations and the folio, the, the page cache, or uh, those uh, actual page uh, allocation has to be like, has to find the original uh, C group to charge and then, okay. Yeah. That's the plan, okay. Uh, so if, so, so I, I just want to clarify: Does do, do C group do, do the struct mm struct belong to a C group, or does the process belong to a C group? Process. Or the process. Process. Is it, is but the process. Right. Is it too late to change that? <laughs> uh, I, I think it is. Uh, 
Okay, one well, more question. I think it's just, uh, uh, I'm curious what happens if the, uh, the source process goes away and uh, the child keeps populating page table and, and uh, just to use up the memory, who is going to kill? Are we going to kill everybody? Uh, this is first question. The second question is regarding to the page alignment. I was thinking, because the page table, it seems like depending on how far you want to share the page, it, it could be uh, PMD, it could be PUB, upper, how, what is the page alignment requirement on the parent especially? How do we do proper alignment on all of the processes? Yeah, so uh, uh, that's uh, one of the things. I'm starting out uh, with the uh, alignment and size requirement to P, uh, page D, but we could uh, go to PUD or PMD, uh, but I want to start out simple. Start out with page D, but don't design out uh, the flexibility to switch to a different alignment, or even do we want to support multiple alignments? So. It gets more complex, but I don't want to design that out. That's not where I would like to start. Start simple, expand it later. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to go back to what Michael and Shakir were discussing. We have most of these problems today already with things like TEMFS, right? With the memory is charged in first touch base and you can kill the process, the memory doesn't go away, and multiple processes are using the same memory and only one of them is charged for it. So I don't think and all of these problems already, I'm not saying we should keep doing it, I'm just saying it's not, it's not really his problem. I'm just saying we already have this problem with a lot of shared resources and we shouldn't, I mean, we should find a more fundamental solution than something that's customized to this use case. Yeah. The question is, does this make it fundamentally more complex or not? And uh, right now, uh, Clone VM without clone thread is a pain already. Uh, have a look at Exit, M, uh, Exit MM, where we try to find new task that is responsible for the MM. Right. We have that uh, uh, task owner, and it's just one. Now we are talking about potentially many, because uh, you can map, I, I guess, many of those regions and uh, maybe that's workable. Um, I'm not saying that it's not, but I I'm just trying to uh, raise awareness that uh, uh, this will not be probably easy. Maybe that's uh, that can be handled the same way as uh, shared memory, but uh, we tried to deal with that last 15 years or so, and we haven't found a solution. So um, it, it, it might be tricky. That, yes. That's what I'm saying. So, so, so would one easy way, at least initially, forward be that you have to m keep that process away, uh, uh, alive, the initial one that created it, as long as you are uh, able to allocate new pages, right? like resolve new page faults? Like did, you, did you, you, you have one process that creates the stuff and that one has to be kept alive and belong to a C group and within that context we will resolve page faults and all of that and charge it to that C group. Would that be like at least initially a way forward? It's like a lot of unkillable processes that, Not you, only, can, I, I mean, that you can generate on just like easily. So David is suggesting just the one that creates a region, not all the ones that are sharing it. Keep that one alive forever. Yeah, but isn't that just a very simple way to create unkillable processes? Uh, you, you, you just create that region shared with somebody else, uh, nev never really... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right, but you can really only tear down the, the MM that owns all of that once everybody no longer maps that stuff. I mean, you, you could be smart and say, if I kill that process, I'm going to sap that special shared MemFD, and for that I have to, like, remove all of the page tables from all of the processes that are sharing it. I think there would be ways to get it done. It's going to be ugly, <laughs> but, but it could be done. Well, you, you, you might have to unmap from all of the processes. Well, you, then. you don't need to. You don't need to unmap from all the processes because the actual page table is shared. You just need to zap that one shared page and it's gone from everywhere instantly. And then you just keep the one shared, the 4K around sort of yeah. zombie until everybody And, and any page those. fault would just say, well, it can no longer yeah. map pages, yeah, allocate yeah, it's, it's page like tables. The zap's then. the easiest part. Oh, okay. So uh, the uh, top level page D entry, keep that around and... Uh, okay. Yeah, but so uh, what I've been wanting to ask is how does the locking work? Like, how does, how does a page walker work? This seems more complicated than it used to be. 
So uh, from Paige Table uh, Walker point of view, uh, nothing is really changing. Because uh, if the Paige Table Walker is uh, walking the, say, one of the um, uh, guest processes that's mapping uh, this uh, shared memory, it comes over here, and it, it will simply follow a point. No, no, that I understand. Point. I asked, yeah. how does the locking work, right? So like a, a traditional locked page walker like GUP, it'll it obtain the MMAP SEM of the guest process, it will look up the VMA, mm -hmm. then we'll find the VMA is not the right VMA, then we'll find another MM, which it then has to lock, and then it has to walk its VMAs. So you've created like nested MMAP SEMs, which is a little bit concerning. Uh -huh. And you've True. made the page walker now sort of recursive, which is like a mess. It's, not really recursive. it's, two it's just two levels. Well, yeah. we, 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 we explicitly will not support nested, right? Well, this, is, this, is, this is one level can't. depth, right? right? You can't because you'd never, you'd have locking cycles. Oh God, you, you probably could create locking cycles if, if we were to ever allow, yeah. So we're not gonna do that. That's just not a thing. <laughs> don't worry, but don't worry. Like one level nesting, that's it. I mean, my approach to the whole thing, and Willie will not agree to that, is that you have like a VMA container and that just says this is a shared region and each and every page table walker will say, I don't know what to do with that thing. I'm going to leave it alone. For example, why, why, why should you do an SMAP roll-ups over that? Yeah, but we want GUP to work. We want... G G Gap, Gap, you, I mean, you can special case these things, but may yeah. maybe we don't want to have like page walk, like each and every page table walker o walking over a thing where it doesn't even maybe not know what is special DMA that is in there. I mean, I think you're opening a can of worms if you say some undefined set of stuff doesn't work. No, it, it's essentially like if you would do a, a VM PFN map. Most of the page table walker leave that alone because the pages are not ref counted. They belong to somebody else. So you do exactly that, and that makes stuff a lot easier. I don't know. Um. I, 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 I think so. As soon as you try to be smart and say, well, let's do like uh, recursive walks over something like that, just leave it alone. It's shared page tables. Let me ask a slightly different question. Like yesterday, the presentation about the, the tri VMA. Um, the the lockless the, the lockless page fault path with the tri VMA thing where you had that little bit of code where it, you know right yeah you did that <laughs> <laughs> could that encapsulate this sort of multi hop thing like a lot of the page walkers they just want the VMA object and the appropriate lock for it they don't really need the MFSM now necessarily mm -hmm. like we could, we're we're getting to that point does it just nicely encapsulate into like a little bit blob of code where you say well here's my address give me the VMA and you happen to get a VMA that's somewhere else. Like, it, it, could it be that simple? Like, you're making faces, but, like, that seems like it could be okay. Yeah. So, so, I'm starting to eat into Matthew's time, so oh, maybe sorry. we should wrap it up. So, so, just to wrap up on that, I, I think we should special case that VMA as much as possible because it, it's weird that you're sharing VMAs between processes. That, that's my point. For example, assume you gap it, and I mean, you gap it, then you set like a uh, page pinned on some MM, you have to reroute that to the other MM that some page is pinned. It all gets very confusing yeah. and complicated. That's why I'm saying don't, don't do it initially and then find a way to enable selected parts that you want to support. I, I'm fairly confident that at least the use cases I can imagine for this that are not related to a database would want all those what, things. What would what, what you need exactly? Uh, Certainly GUP, um, IOMMU SVA, and I'd want HMM to work, minimally. Okay, so that's like, HMM that's is page fault path, right? Yeah, well no, okay. HMM is the page walk, the generic page walk. Right okay. after the fault, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. It, you know, it's a lot. <laughs> but again, like that's another discussion to have, I think. But yeah. Sorry, Matthew. So. Okay, thank you.